I'm Michael Redmond, professional nine down go player. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a variation of the basic joseki where black plays an attachment underneath in the position shown. In a previous video, I talked about the solid connection here and the joseki that followed. So this is going to talk about the other variation that white can often play, which is the hanging connection. So if you're interested in the solid connection, there is a video on that and I'll make sure to put a link up there and down in the description of the video also. So on this variation, this was a very popular variation for several decades. Played quite often when black has a position in the upper left corner as it's shown in this position. It's become slightly less common nowadays partly because computer programs do not choose to play this way very much. Also, there's the fact that black does have a wide variety of choices at this point. So in this video, I'm going to talk mainly about this and the following invasion. So this is going to be not only about the Joseki itself, I'm going to go into more detail as to how black will try to invade white's position on the upper side uh, when white plays this extension on the side. Just to go into one variation here, if black plays something on the upper side, white's follow-up move is probably going to be this attachment on the third line. And one example of what could happen with that is this variation where white builds outside thickness and black will play away. Um, you can see black is taking a lot of opening points while white has a strong position in the upper right area. And this, this is close enough to even. It's just one of the many possibilities that black has at this point. But for the purpose of this video, which is still one of the basic Joseki videos, I'll just consider this, this move, which is the most normal move, the most popular move also for black. White plays the extension. In this opening, when black has a corner enclosure with these two stones in the upper left corner, it will always be a big move for black to play this extension on the third line. For the purpose of this video, I've added, added in this Kakari just to show how sometimes black will be trying to um, build a framework, a moyo, uh, from the lower left to the left side. Now at this point, white actually has a number of choices. When black plays this extension on the side at this point, the safe move for white to choose to play would be a jump here. So this would get rid of most of the danger of a black invasion. It's perfectly fine. Actually, the AI ver version of what white should do at this point is the attachment here. There was actually a video I've made about this attachment against the large knight Shimari. I'll add a link for that one also, uh, probably up there and in the comments below. In this variation, black will answer in the corner. And it's a bit special uh, version of this when there's a black stone right here, which is not usually the case. This is an example of what might follow. And you can see with white playing this way, the idea is to build a position here and getting rid of the weak point here, which I'm coming to. This is this mark point here is where black would have liked to invade the upper side. And we're going to assume that white has played away. So black has played this extension on the side and white has played away to the lower right corner. And now I'm going to talk about the invasion that black is planning to play in the upper side. So this is a key point here, threatening to connect underneath on the second line. So white will stop that by playing here. When white plays here, black actually has a choice of playing to the second line or the fourth line. These two points. This one uh, has been played a lot. It's not really that, white doesn't really have to be very scared of this move. White can just play on top and allow black to connect underneath. After which white can just play away. And there's nothing much that black can do to follow up. 
for instance, if black plays like this, white can just connect on the on the fifth line. White has a perfectly strong position towards the center and did get to play, actually if you count this stone, white actually got to play two extra moves, which were big opening points. So this is not a big problem for white, it's perfectly fine. So I would say the move that white has to be careful of is when black plays high to the fourth line. I might add just one more variation. If black plays on the third line, black can make a co out of it. But early in the game, black will not have a good co threat for this co. So at this point, it's probably not a good idea for black to be playing this co. So again, I will say that this is black's best local move. And black has ideas of covering white from above. So black would like to make a wall here to expand the left side area. So to show how that happens, for instance if white crawls, black will bump against, and if white connects underneath, black can play one cut here and cover from above. It's important to cover from above here. Playing from underneath just doesn't work because white can curl around. And in this case, playing here and playing here become Mi'ai. So white will capture black one way or the other. So black cannot do that, but should instead cover from above. And white will take the one stone. And black kicks once. This is threatening to squeeze from underneath. So like if white plays somewhere else, Black can play here and take away white's eye space while attacking the whole white group. So this would be very bad for white because white does not have any eye space at all. Therefore, white will answer this, threatening to play and to attack here. And black will answer here. Black has a very nice, strong shape here connected up on the side. And if white plays away, if white plays away, black can follow up with this move, which continues to attack the white group. So this white group has one eye here, but the second eye for white is not very clear yet. White does not yet have a second eye for the group and will have to be answering black for a while. In this variation, black can be satisfied with a very strong position here towards the center of the board, which also reinforces black's territorial area in the upper left. In this variation, white might continue with something local. For instance, this is a move that is commonly played, in which case black will leave the attack for now and probably play something on the left side. Some Black could play something, some kind of an extension on the left side or could play the popular joseki, which is the attachment in the double hana here. In either case, black would be building on the left side using this strong shape to develop towards the center eventually. So when black bumps against white here, the variation we were looking at just now was when white played the connection underneath. So the other variation black has to be prepared for is what if white curls around? So when white curls around, this is going to be a, a fight because black gets to play this hane, which will stop white from connecting underneath. So just to recap, in the first variation, white tried to connect underneath, and black got to cover from above, making a strong shape on the outside. When white curls around, black can play a hane underneath. And in this variation, white can cover on the second line, in which case black just moves out into the center. And you can see that white is split into two weak, relatively weak groups. So white has to deal with this group and this group. While black is in between the two white groups, black has potential to attack here. So while it's probably fairly close game, I'd, I'd be perfectly happy to play with black in this position.
So that's what happens if white covers on the second line. If white tries to connect up in the center, black will not allow that to happen easily. So black will start by jumping out here. And if white pushes through, you can see that black has created a cutting point here, as well as the option of extending out. So white probably has to capture that one stone, like this, in which case black can cut here, taking a nice profit in the upper left corner. Again, the, there's addition, additional profit in the fact that this corner is turning into a, a real territory here. It's very big for black. When otherwise there would have been various potentials, potentials for white to play moves like this and like this to erase the corner territory. So in this case, when black gets a strong position by cutting and capturing the three stones like this, it helps black uh, secure that upper left corner territory. Otherwise, if white connects here, black can just extend. And this is going to start a fight in the center of the board in which white has not very strong shape on the left. So this group here is going to struggle a bit as white tries to live. And the other group on the right is, this group is not immediately weak, uh, but it's not completely alive either. So black has potential to attack on either side, and this looks very promising for black. So just to recap, to go back to this position, this is a point where white should really be thinking of somehow protecting the extension. When black plays this uh, large move on the side, black is threatening to invade next. So the most common move would be to play here. While if you want to get fancy, um, you can play the attachment. This is the AI move, you might say. Um, obviously, it's, I'm only showing the one variation in this video. Obviously, it's a more complicated variation. And I suggest you study this um, more thoroughly before you actually try it. It's really outside the limits of this uh, basic video. But if white does play away, black should remember in this position it's much more effective to play this on the fourth line than it is to play this move on the second line, which is also has been called, called a joseki. It's just not as strong an attack on white when white can play away now. So this is quite fine for white. And I suggest that black should be playing the high, the high play and bumping against white to start a potential fight in, in the board, in the upper side of the board, where black does have an advantage in numbers. So that's my um, commentary on the invasion of the Tsukehiki Joseki. So that's it for this video. And thank you for watching. If you liked it, uh, give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for this channel. Thank you.